Hello Penguinauts, I'm the Beardy Penguin and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Endurance. I left you on a bit of a cliffhanger last time once again with our newly modified Frontier Shuttle re-entering the atmosphere. A trial by fire, quite literally it's going to be hitting the atmosphere at a couple of kilometers per second. So as you can see we've made a few modifications to the shuttle. It has canards at the front which give it a lot more pitch control allowing it to maintain its attitude. It also has much smaller wings which are more towards the back of the uh, spacecraft which moves its center of lift backwards meaning that we aren't going to flip upwards all the time uh, giving us a little bit more control. You probably saw there we were pumping as much fuel forward as we could to try and move the center of mass uh, ahead of our center of lift so that we can make ourselves aerodynamically stable. As you can see, we're trying to enter the atmosphere at a very high angle of attack in the upper atmosphere and lose as much velocity as possible. But once we start getting down past about 50 kilometers, things start getting really quite difficult to control. So it's at this point we start lowering the angle of attack bit by bit, just keeping a close eye on how much uh, turning force we're actually trying to apply here. You keep an eye on the bottom left, you can see how hard we're pitching. Uh, and I just put the SAS on and leave it at that angle of attack until I see that we're almost uh, rotating as much as we physically can and then I'll drop the angle of attack a little bit more. Combination of the reaction control thrusters and of course the control surfaces on the shuttle. Soon enough it gets to a point where we're so unstable that we need to almost fly directly along our prograde marker because if we take any uh, larger angle of attack we're going to flip out and lose control of the spacecraft entirely. We do get a rather nice shot of the sun rising there as we uh, hit a massive lag spike but then partially due to the lag spike we uh, <laughs> start losing control of the spacecraft. We do actually manage to regain control, a testament to how much better this space shuttle is than the last one but now we're getting into the deeper atmosphere and since we don't have a particularly high angle of attack we aren't losing speed fast enough and we are really heating up and as you see that cabin is yeah getting pretty hot so in the end I just give up on trying to maintain control over the spacecraft and just flip out because we need to lose some speed um, in order to stop ourselves overheating and exploding. This does mean, however, we are now in a flat spin, but as you can see, we cut things a little bit too fine with the cabin there. It is very, very hot. That's what 120% re-entry heating will do for you. Maybe I shouldn't have turned that on, but hey, I don't know. It makes things a little bit more exciting and, well, a lot more difficult. So, as you see, we are in a flat spin, but thankfully, with the upgraded control systems on this spacecraft, we can actually regain control, pointing the nose down towards the ground and then very gently raising it up and gliding in onto a beach only about 50 kilometers from the space center. So, not too bad, though I do say so myself. Not exactly a runway landing, but not far from it. So, back in space, up in solar orbit, we have finally got our Sentinel space probe heading down towards a low orbit around Archangel. We can activate all of its scientific instruments and get a bunch of data from around the sun and activate its telescope and start finding asteroids. However, that's going to take quite some time. So in the meantime, we are sending the final Griffin mission. I cut out most of the launch because you've seen this, <laughs> this rocket launch many times before. So this is the Griffin Z. It isn't given a number because this Griffin mission is a bit of a special one. Talos 1 is sitting in orbit and we've already visited every biome on Guardian. However, Talos 1 needs data to keep researching and keep generating science. And to do that, we need to sort of periodically send a lander down to the surface, get some data from a biome, bring it back up and put it into the two labs on the station to keep topping up the amount of data it has and keep generating lovely bounties of science for us. So what we're doing is we're sending what appears to be a bog standard Griffin mission with a scientist paying an awful lot of money to go to a specific part of Guardian. However, what we're going to do today is actually leave the lander on Talos 1. Talos 1 has got a lot of fuel on it because the station contracts and station expansion contracts demanded that we have a bunch of liquid fuel and then on the third module, the research module, uh, I decided to bring along a bunch of oxidizers. So we've got a lot of fuel on the station. So we might as well just leave the lander there. We have enough fuel to go down to the surface and back up again. Something like five or six times. There's only eight biomes 
on Guardian anyway. We kind of mess up our insertion burn here. I kind of intended to match our inclination with Talos 1, but we waited a little bit too long and messed it up. But a small correction burn soon fixed that. But yeah, we're going to dock with Talos 1 first. As you see, we up the size of the docking ports on the command module and the lander. We're going to go rendezvous with Talos 1. We're going to dock the service module or command module to Talos 1, then use the lander to take our scientists down to the surface, get all the data that we need to do, head back up to Talos 1, and then get them back into the command module and send them home. We've also brought another scientist along with us because we rescued a scientist, Bobsy Kerman, from orbit last episode. And so it would be silly not to send them up to Talos 1 because one of our labs has only got a single scientist in it. I wasn't sure whether medics could actually do scientific research. It says in the uh, descriptions they can aid with scientific and colonization research. I don't know if that means they speed up research, um, but they certainly can't actually do scientific research themselves. Although they do keep our Kerbals healthy and happy, so it's certainly worthwhile having a medic or two on the station. This docking actually takes quite some time because now we've got the new docking ports, we don't have the SES systems. Uh, I accidentally removed the probe cores, uh, so we don't actually have an SES on that docking, so it took quite a lot of time. Thankfully, we have a pilot on the lander. We have, of course, Katrina Kerman. Katrina Kerman will not be staying on Dallas 1. Katrina Kerman's a hot shot. She's not, <laughs> certainly not going to be willing to sit on a station for hundreds of days at, <laughs> at an end, uh, stuck with Ted Kerman and a bunch of eggheads for company. No, she wants risk, she wants danger, she wants explosions and rockets. And we're going to give her exactly that. We're sending Katrina Kerman and our scientist Hellrod Kerman down to the surface. Thankfully, Talos 1's orbit lined up pretty much perfectly with our landing site, so a very small inclination change, and we get ourselves heading down towards the surface to get ourselves a huge amount of money. We're not going to get much new data from this, because of course we've been to every biome of Guardian, However, we do actually have a seismic scanner now. We unlocked the tech which gave us that, which will give us uh, a nice bounty of science. Seismic scans really do give you quite a decent amount of science. They're quite advanced uh, and very, very good, actually, uh, experiments. Although, of course, they only work on the surface of a world, so you need to actually get down. We very nearly crashed into the surface, but we kind of suicide burned there. Realised we haven't landed quite close enough, and then just do a few little hops over to the landing zone. We've got plenty of fuel back on Talos 1, so as long as we don't burn through too much it's not too much of a problem and we set ourselves down guardians too nice to have any earthquakes or plate tectonics there we go our first seismic scan from anywhere actually we just unlocked the part we can also analyze the atmospheric composition which gives us a lot of science i'm not entirely sure how that works considering guardian doesn't have an atmosphere but hey i don't know maybe it's the dust on the surface who knows now we can actually set the seismic scanner to record data and then smash something to the surface and then get science that way. That is part of KSP Interstellar. But we don't really have anything viable for smashing to the surface. I mean, we have GuardSat 1, but I mean, that's a communication satellite. It's not a very good communication satellite, but I still don't think it really deserves being smashed into the surface. Um, we also have the Griffin 2 lander over here, but we have no control over that. Uh, so I think we'll leave it for another day, the whole uh, setting the seismic scanner to record. You see, they can collect impact data, which is very nice. But there we go, we have completed our contract. We need to also plant a flag, so we're going to get Obzi out. Uh, Obzi is a new scientist that we got from Orbit of Solitude. And what we're going to try and do is level them up a bit before we send them back up to Talos 1, because one of the functionality thingy with hobbies that the science labs can do is level people up out in the field. So we're going to give him some experience by planting the flag and then we're going to take him back up to Talos 1, level him up and when he'll, he's a uh, level 2 scientist he'll research at a much faster rate. So this is Griffin Z dash spacious highlands uh, yeah Let's not smash God Sat 1 just yet. We probably will end up smashing it at some point, but hey, we don't need to do it just yet, so I don't think we're going to. So what we need to do now is take all the experiments out, store them in here to take, well, some of the experiments back to Solitude, and some of the experiments uh, we're going to put into the processing lab and some of the experiments we can put into, well, the same experiment into both processing labs. We probably should have put a science storage unit on this so we could store three lots of the same experiment.
but oh well, what are you going to do? So, now we have all the data we need, we're going to return to orbit. We're going to launch right now before Talos 1 is actually directly overhead, because of course, Guardian is rotating, and the longer we wait, the more out of plane we're going to get with Talos 1's orbit. So we're going to launch as quickly as possible, get up into orbit, and then that saves us a lot of fuel on inclination change. I mean, we could have waited until we were directly aligned with Talos 1's orbit, but hey, you know, don't think about it too much. We pass over some interesting geological features at the North Pole. There used to be a pyramid at the North Pole, and now there are three massive spires. It looks a bit Mordory, to be honest. Um, not entirely sure what that's about, probably due to the uh, updates with Games Links' Planet Pack. He probably tried to get rid of the uh, pyramid and instead made three massive spires. Perhaps there's some kind of alien force at work here. Ooh, spooky! But no, we're probably not going to visit them anytime soon because it's not a particularly interesting biome. I don't know, we might we might visit the spires, but it, it's a terrain glitch, guys. No, I mean, it's aliens. Yeah, what's that? What's that meme, the History Channel guy with his hands sort of up in front of him and his one eye slightly squinting and he's just got aliens? The History Channel guy who just blamed everything on aliens. What was that guy's name? That was a funny meme. I quite like that. That's, why, don't, why am I talking about memes? <laughs> Let's not start talking about memes because that's a slippery slope. Although, what the hell is going on with 2018 memes? Like, seriously, man. Do you know the way? Well, I know I'm not saying that right, but... Of all the memes, man. Tide Pods... To... <sighs> what is all that about? I don't understand. Anyway, so let's get back to the actual space mission. Stop talking about memes. So, we've rendezvoused with Talos 1 quite easily. Rendezvousing in space is kind of second nature to me at this point. When you've done it this many times, um, it's really not too much of a problem. I still remember my early days trying to dock stuff and how horrendous I was. But now we have all of our data. So what we're doing is we're putting our copies of data into all of these science labs. So we've got one load going into one of the labs and then we've got one load going into the other lab. We then put our scientist into the science lab. Bobsy, I think I claimed that Katrina went down to the surface. Katrina didn't actually go down to the surface, it was Bobsy and Hellrod. I wanted to give Bobsy some experience, um, so <laughs> I made a mistake with that. But yeah, so Bobsy's now in the science lab and now we've got two scientists in each lab. And we're just taking the reports that we haven't previously recovered back home with us. So the seismic scan we took, we had two copies. Uh, and we're taking one back to Solitude and we're leaving one in one of the labs. We've actually got more data than we know what to do with, so we had to leave some of the science reports just sitting in one of the labs because we can't process them yet because we've given them so much data. With two scientists in each lab, each lab is producing roughly 10 science a day. So we're getting 20 science a day from Talos 1 and as soon as they start running low on data we can just send the lander back down again. So that's going to produce us a hell of a lot of science. But in the meantime it's time to send Katrina and Hellrod back home. Katrina probably had more than enough of Talos 1 in the short few hours that she was sitting on board listening to Ted cracking terrible puns and the like. They do get along very well, but Ted is a remarkably reliable but remarkably boring person. So we pull the parachutes, a pretty bog standard return, I do say so myself. I wanted to leave some of the fuel in the service module in Talos 1, but we had a problem with the fuel transfer. But still, we touch down without a problem and we recover the vessel. So, with that huge amount of money that we now possess after completing all the contract for Guardian, we can finally upgrade our mission control. We're not going to research any more planets, not just yet. We've got a couple of transfer windows coming up relatively soon. And I want to have quite a bit of money left over for the amount of money those missions are going to cost. And also in case we have to upgrade the tracking station to upgrade our deep space network's power. I'm pretty sure it shouldn't be a problem. Um, but I'm not entirely sure just how distant the inner planets are. So we'll keep some money lying around because, as I said, it takes 750,000 funds to research a planet. And, well, there's no immediate need to research Drizzen or Altos just yet. So we've got 770 science. Let's head on over to the R&D center and see what we can grab. So we've got field science, which is very tempting, which gives us all the rover parts, gives us the chem cam. Which is pretty freaking awesome. We're gonna make a Curiosity rover. Thing is, heading to Demise or Wasteland, that's not the most useful thing because I think I certainly know that Demise Eve is too hot 
four wheels. Unless you land in like the highlands, it, the surface of Demise is very, very hot and I think it will destroy wheels very easily. You see the temperature tolerance of these things isn't particularly high. I think the landing legs are going to have to use are going to have to be made of structural parts. Uh, that's how hot that, uh, that planet is and it's covered in lava. Wasteland I don't think is as bad. It's a bit further away from the sun but it's still covered in lava. So yeah, maybe not. Although we do get the ChemCam, which is uh, an additional science unit, which is particularly nice. We could also go for unmanned tech. Uh, no, that's not particularly useful. There's nothing in there. High power electrics gives us uh, a bunch of cool stuff, as well as the big powerful solar arrays and large thermal control systems. We can start beaming microwave power, so we can start generating electricity and then beaming that electricity across the solar system using microwaves. I'm not entirely sure if... We're going to set up any kind of system like that. We might do, but I don't know in this series if we really need a microwave power network. But we shall see. Logistics uh, for colonization. No, we don't need that yet. Heavy aerodynamics could be useful. Although we're not using our shuttle too much at the moment. We've got a lot of deep space stuff we're focusing on. So not right now. A, a forklift. <laughs> that's all that's in advanced actuators. Composites could be helpful. Gives us a bunch of stuff for Kerbal inventory systems and bigger fairings, 3.75 meter fairings. Uh, and we're not watching anything that big just yet. Advanced metal work. We've got, there we go. So we've got mining drills, surface sample collection drills. So we can take surface samples with probes, which is particularly useful with the upcoming missions. Uh, we also get a bunch of stuff for extraplanetary launch pads, which is very, very nice. Allowing us to build stuff off planet, not that we'll really use that yet. Although the protected, uh, the shielded docking port is certainly very nice. Or we could go for a good old nuclear propulsion. Ooh. Here's a choice. I think we're going to get a bit more science from Talos 1 before our next transfer window. But I think, I think nuclear propulsion is going to be very, very useful. Especially for sending small probes to the inner planet. Uh, they're very expensive, that's for sure. But, uh... I think it's going to be worth it. So we're going to grab ourselves nuclear propulsion. That leads us to nuclear power, which gives us some small nuclear reactors. And I think we're also going to grab ourselves field science to get our hands on those lovely Rovemax wheels, if I can actually select them. There we go. And the ChemCam. Wonderful. We can build ourselves a Curiosity rover, which should be pretty damn cool. Well, just 130 days of Talos 1 working its way through the research data we gave it and we have received a thousand units of science from the station. Those scientists are certainly making themselves busy up there and well certainly paying for themselves as well. So let's head ourselves over to R&D and get ourselves some more techs. I feel like this tech tree is going to start evaporating if we keep researching things at the rate we currently are. I mean to be fair, these techs are 300 science per tech, and it took us 130 days to get 1,000 science. Look how expensive some of the later techs are. Okay, 10,000, 10,000, 4,000. Yeah, this is a very, very expensive and expansive tech tree, so don't worry about us completing it too early. Trust me, we're going to have to go to every inch of this new solar system in order to work our way through all these techs. But it's going to be very helpful to have at least this tier finished by the time we start going properly into planetary. So, first things first, let's get ourselves advanced metalworks, research, grab ourselves that surface sample collection drill, meaning we can take surface samples now from the surfaces of Demise and the Wasteland or wherever else we deem appropriate to send probes. But let's grab ourselves unmanned tech. I think we'll grab... All of those, actually. There we go. We purchase all of those parts. Uh, we can actually research something else. We're spoiled for choice here. Yeah, composites it is. We'll grab ourselves composites. I'm not entirely sure what we need from composites just yet. But that's some very nice cockpits, some 3.75 meter fairings. We can start launching some much bigger stuff. Uh, and just some useful stuff for a USI. We're going to get a lot more science out of Talos 1. And if we run out of data, we can just send the lander, the Griffin said lander, which is why we left it there, down to the surface and back up indefinitely. Well, not indefinitely, but there's a lot of fuel on Talos 1. So, uh, yeah, we're going to get a lot of science out of that. We just have to give it quite a bit of time.